The Ice Age is coming and you must prepare your tribe to survive. You will need to hunt, gather and hoard resources to become the most powerful tribe in this race against time. In Tusk, a semi-cooperative game for two to four players, you're a tribal leader who must grow your tribe, gather resources and fight for your position whilst maintaining beneficial alliances and trading partners with other tribes led by your fellow players in order to be the tribe most prepared to survive when the Ice Age inevitably comes. First, you need to set up the world, the tribes, and the hunt. There are easy step-by-step -step instructions and a handy diagram on pages 2 and 3 of the rulebook. Finally, choose the first player. This is determined as the person who has most recently foraged for food. Then you're ready to play. There are three phases in each turn. The tribe phase, the hunt phase, and season phase. Tribe phase. Starting with the first player, the tribe phase is broken into three steps. Grow the tribe, send out hunters, and send out gatherers. For a player to grow their tribe, they must discard the number of tasty food tokens shown to the left of the tribe members on their tribe board. They can then place a new tribe member on the game board on a tile already containing another member of your tribe. Next, the player decides how many tribe members, if any, they want to commit to the hunt, moving this number of tribe members from the game board to the hunting party space on the hunt board. The first player to commit to the hunt becomes the hunt leader. After choosing whether or not to grow the tribe and commit to the hunt, players may then take two actions with every tribe member in play on the board. They can move up to two tiles, or one if into difficult terrain, gather a resource token from a tile, or use a tile's special rule to discard resource tokens in exchange for tasty food, recover from a fight or hunt wound. Note this is the only action this tribe member can do. Fight another tribe member on the same board tile. If two opposing tribe members are on a board tile, they can choose to fight for resources. This follows two simple steps. One, both players secretly decide how many pointy stick, clump of grass, and lump of stone tokens from their resource piles they will use in the fight. These are revealed together and placed on top of the tribe board. 2. Both players now roll to wound opposing tribe members. Roll a die for each of your healthy tribe members on the tile. Add plus 1 to each die roll for each pointy stick you're using, and subtract 1 to each die roll for each clump of grass your opponent is using. A result of 6 or more wounds an opposing tribe member. Lay them on their side to show they're wounded. There may be more wounds inflicted than opposing tribe members. These are counted as excess wounds. The player who wounds more of the opposing tribe members than they wounded of yours wins the fight. The winner can help themselves to tasty food tokens from the resource pile equal to the wound difference, including excess wounds. If the result is a draw, neither player collects food. If a player wounds any opposing tribe members and has a lumpy stone, they also wound an additional tribe member from the same tribe. This happens after the fight and doesn't change the outcome, and you can do this whether you won or lost the fight. After the fight, all committed resources are discarded. If the fight is between multiple tribes, all the players involved roll dice. Players must decide which player their tribe members are going to attack starting with the player who started the fight action and going clockwise. Add up all the wounds inflicted, and the player that inflicted the most wounds wins the fight. Players can choose not to join in the fight, in the hope that other tribes will fight amongst themselves, but be warned, they can still turn on you. Sometimes lending a hand to help another tribe will help you too. Players can give resource tokens from their tribe board to another player at any time, either as a gift, in trade, or for future promises. These are not binding, however, so be careful who you align with. Once all players have completed their tribe phase, it's time to hunt. There are three steps to the hunt phase. Step one, hunters attack. Starting with the hunt leader, and moving clockwise, each player attacks the mammoth. To attack the mammoth, players commit resources, pointy stick, clump of grass, and lumpy stone tokens from the tribe board placing them at the top of their tribe board. Roll a die for each of your unwounded tribe members on the hunt board. Add one to each die roll for each pointy stick you are using. 
For each result of six or more, take one of the tasty food tokens from the mammoth's wounds on the hunt board. If you wounded the mammoth, each lumpy stone you are using takes another wound from the mammoth. When a player takes the last tasty food token from the mammoth's wounds track, it dies and the hunt is successful. Step 2. Mammoth counterattacks. If the mammoth is not killed, it will fight back. After all the players have made their attacks, roll one die for each of your healthy tribe members in the hunt. Each result of 4, 5 or 6 wounds a tribe member. Lay them on their side. If you use clumps of grass, subtract one from each die roll against your tribe members. Step 3. Regroup. After the counterattack is over, you can call off your hunt by placing all of your tribe members from the hunt board on a tile adjacent to the mammoth. If all your tribe members on the hunt board are wounded, you must call off your hunt. All resources used so far in the hunt are now discarded. If you are the hunt leader, and the hunt goes on without your tribe members, you still shear out the bonus tasty food tokens. If any players still have tribe members on the hunt board, return to step 1. Once the hunt is concluded, the turn ends with a season phase. This has four steps. Step 1. New season. Draw one card from the top of the seasons deck and follow its instructions. These can affect resources, terrain, the mammoth and tribe members and remain in effect for the whole turn. Step 2. Mammoth herd roams. Roll a die and look at the mammoth breeding ground tile to see which direction the mammoth moves. Consult the season card to see how far it goes. If the mammoth moves into or through a tile containing your tribe members, all of them are wounded and moved one tile away. Some season cards prevent the mammoth from entering specific tiles. If the mammoth would enter such a tile, it stops moving instead. If the mammoth would move off the play area, place it on the mammoth breeding ground instead. Step 3. Discover new lands. Add a ring of terrain tiles to the play area, expanding it by one tile in each direction. Put three resource tokens of the appropriate type on each terrain tile. When there are no more terrain tiles to be placed, the Ice Age cometh. Once the Ice Age has started, the subsequent season cards will indicate how many rows of terrain tiles will flip that season. When there are no more terrain tiles to play, the Ice Age begins. Roll a die and look at the Mammoth Breeding Ground tile to see which direction the snow will come from. Flip the terrain tile at the indicated corner and the three tiles clockwise over to their snow sites. Any resources on that tile are removed. When the terrain tiles have all been flipped, the Ice Age has arrived, ending the game. Step 4. End the turn. If the world has not frozen over, then the first player passes the token to their left and a new turn begins. Ending the game. Once ice has covered the entire playing area, it is time to see which tribe is best prepared to survive the Ice Age. To determine the winner, reveal victory cards if they are face down. Your victory cards will tell you how many tasty food tokens to add to your tribe board, depending on what other tokens you have on your tribe board or victory card. Count your tasty food tokens. The tribe with the most tasty food tokens is the most prepared to survive the Ice Age, and the winner of the game. And with that, you are all prepared to take on the Mammoth and prepare for the Ice Age. Head over to our website to grab your copy of Tusk today.